Eric, good to have you here in Berlin. I hear it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you. Visiting. First time in Super Returns. I've been first to Berlin time in several Return. times. But. Very good. Excellent. And we're here to talk about travel and the trends in the industry as an yes. investor uh, who has been doing this for quite some time. Tell us about your experience during the pandemic. What did you anticipate and how did it pan out? Well, we never anticipated COVID, of course, right? I don't think anyone did. Maybe, maybe save for Bill Gates. Um, but we were anticipating we were going to have an economic cycle. So we were positioned very defensively going into COVID, which for us means 90% uh, of our business was based upon the leisure consumer rather than the corporate consumer. The leisure consumer tends to be very resilient. But when COVID happened, you know, we, we shut down virtually all of our businesses overnight uh, over the course of a week or two. Um, and we quickly developed a planning case that we thought demand would start from zero and come back about 25% per quarter. Um, eventually getting back to prior kind of 19, 2019 levels of demand for the industry, um, you know, kind of roughly by 2022. Um, and so that was kind of what we planned around. We're actually well ahead of that, um, really driven by the leisure consumer, the leisure consumer that has come back with uh, revenge travel um, in a really significant way. So, um, so things have outpaced what we thought would happen. But it was it was really rough there for a while. Notwithstanding a major shock in the economy, what are your sort of estimates for the next year when it comes to leisure travel in particular? Well, we're trending right now about 30 percent above 2019 levels of demand. And we have 30 businesses roughly around the world and we track demand weekly and we haven't seen any slow signs of a slowdown yet. Um, I think we'll probably be in that range for 2022. It, you know, in 2023, when we look at leisure, if you look out, you know, kind of the latter side of the year, um, you know, you'll see it be, I think, quite, quite stable and still growing, even in the face of uh, ch challenging economic uh, storm clouds on the horizon, because because leisure is really resilient. Going through COVID, I don't think anyone came through COVID saying, thank God I didn't have to have a, a vacation or a shared experience with a friend or a family. That's just not what happened. We, we were it, the desire for that to be part of our lives was reinforced through COVID. Um, and so I think we'll see that offset uh, any impact uh, from macroeconomic conditions at a meaningful level. You talk about friends and family gathering, but also we are here at a, this major yeah. uh, private equity conference and there has been this need to get away from Zoom calls and get into like uh, having drinks with colleagues and, and peers. How is corporate travel doing? Well, it's coming back. It, it much slower than, than leisure, right? We're, we're running about 75% of prior 2019 peak levels of demand. But interestingly, bookings for corporate travel now for the future are at or above peak levels. Now, th this conference is uh, you know, clearly an indicator that people don't want to be behind their desk doing Zoom. They want to be able to meet like this um, and have a drink and, and watch each other interact and do presentations and so forth. I think that trend's going to continue, but that type of business does get impacted if those storm clouds do materialize into, into an economic cycle or downturn. Um, that, that will be impacted more than the ledger side of the business. None of us saw a pandemic coming, or very few people yeah. did. Uh, you mentioned that dealing with the pandemic, the, uh, private equity has been a case study for it. Can you elaborate a bit what you mean? Yeah, I think that you know, private equity provides you know, patient, committed capital for an extended period of time. You're not under the pressures day to day, week to week that being a public company uh, provides. And so that allows you during the pandemic to take the actions that allow you to strengthen a business through the pandemic. You know, if you own a business that's the number one or number two player in the sector, your opportunity during a cycle, whether it was COVID induced or otherwise, is to capture market share. Market share of employees, market share of customers, market share of available opportunities for investment within that business or sector. And I think, you know, certainly in our case, I think our businesses that we own that tend to be leaders within their sectors of travel, they've come out of COVID even stronger than they went in because we've been able to invest in our people and our, and our companies to make them you know, more appealing, more appealing places to work, more appealing places to visit. Excellent. Eric, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you, Javier. Okay. Great spending time with you.